Almost a hundred years ago, a great American, Jack London, wrote in his diary, the proper function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. Those words might well have been written about Alexei Kovalev, Olympic champion, winner of the Stanley Cup, captain of the Russian hockey squad, and an idol of NHL fans. He is valued and revered in America and in Russia, not only as a hockey player, but also as a colorful and unusual individual. Who is Mr. Kovey? Karen's able to clear. Gretzky with Kovalov. Gretzky, Kovalov scores! He began playing in the NHL back in the last century. It was 1992. He was playing not just with stars, but with legends of world hockey. And today, he himself, a guy from the provincial Russian city of Togliati, is an NHL star and a legend. You can send a message to the teams that uh, where we have to Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. For 14 years now, it's been all workouts, games, tournaments, championships, interviews, defeats, and victories. He started his stellar career in the NHL playing for the Rangers. There, he won the Stanley Cup. Then he was with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Today, he plays right wing for the Montreal Canadiens. At 33, he's already a veteran. But he still has 17 years left to play. So, you say you'll play until you're 50. If my body lets me, yes. I can't imagine myself without ice. Have you ever gotten sick of it all and just wanted to say, to hell with hockey? Sure, of course. But you can't just lock yourself up in a room and forget about hockey. Like today. Here's a good example. We lost yesterday. Today you're thinking about it all the time, getting more and more obsessed. You wonder, will we win tomorrow? Will we lose tomorrow? Will we get to the playoffs or won't we? But what's the point in just sitting and thinking? Better to just go flying. Alexei's plane awaits him at a private airport in Montreal. He's always loved flying in the skies. But it's not easy to become a pilot. It takes him just an hour to fly from Montreal to his home in Connecticut. Flying to his native town where he spent his childhood is a more difficult proposition. He does it once a year at most. More often, he flies there in his memory. I now give the floor to the General Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev. The Kremlin, Moscow. Dear comrades, esteemed foreign guests. February the 24th, 1973. Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev delivers another of his speeches to the Supreme Soviet. As he speaks, a son is born to an auto plant worker, Vyacheslav Kovalev and his wife Pavlina, in the city of Togliati. My parents always wanted me to do something useful and not just hang around in the street. My father was a weightlifter and an amateur judo wrestler. And he wanted me to play some sport so that I wouldn't just be loafing around. And in general, he didn't like sitting in one place. He was very active. He liked the outdoors and played all sorts of games with his friends. Chances are Alexei would have been a street kid if his elder sister hadn't taken up figure skating.
He was five at the time. He was thrilled by skates, the speed, the jumps, and his early successes on the ice. That was when it hit him. He wanted to be a hockey player. Later, when I learned to skate, I thought, why not try? I was doing quite well playing hockey in the street with the kids. Why not give it a try? It was hard not to give it a try when the whole Soviet Union was crazy about hockey. They've done it. The Soviet hockey team is the world champion for the 16th time and the European champion for the 19th time. Inspired by Soviet ice hockey triumphs, Alexei Kovalev first took to the ice as a member of a real hockey team when he was six. The first practices, the instructions of his coach, everything was serious and grown up. Within two months, I was held up as a model. My skating technique was perfect. The coach would sometimes interrupt a practice session and tell the kids to watch as I made a circle. The more I played hockey, the more I developed character. Not to yield, to be the best, to prove that if my skating was better than everyone else's, then I must also be the best at hockey. It's not easy to be the best, especially when you're 10. But it was impossible not to notice the energetic young player. The coach noticed him. He put him in a team of older kids, and everybody knew that this young player would go far. You want to say that from that time on, everything came easy to you? No. No, nothing came easy to me. But this only made me more eager to prove myself, to show that I was the best, and to make myself even better. All over the vast country, competitions were taking place. The Soviet Union was crazy about sports. The 14th All-Union Children's Olympics took place in Lvov in the middle of July. At that time, Alexei Kovalev, an eighth grader, was sitting on the stand in the city of Severodonetsk with a broken arm, watching his team play a hockey tournament. And it was there that he caught the eye of a talent scout from Moscow, who was scouring the provinces for athletic talent for the Moscow Dynamo Club. 6,000 of the bravest and quickest and strongest kids made the finals. He looked around and he watched me and then, at the last moment, decided to talk with me. He asked me if I would like to play for Dinamo. Oh. How old were you? 14. So, at the age of 14, in spite of his father's stern warnings and his mother's tears, Alexei went away to conquer the capital. Dormitory, school, and endless workouts. That was how his independent life began. I lived on instant soup. I came to my room in the evening, and there were rats in the room. And I hid under the blanket. I remember the sound of rats gnawing their food. Those were hard times, but on the other hand, I welcomed the challenge. I'd put on my track suit and stand in the shower and lather up. I discovered it was the best way to wash the track suit. Great idea. <laughs> Those were very hard times. But on the other hand, it was great fun. What I regret most from those days is, first, that I didn't keep the uniform that my father made for me with his own hands when I began playing hockey. And second, that I wasn't able to film certain situations, how I lived, how I moved, all those funny moments and sad moments in my life. 
в жизни. А что самое What's your biggest dream that's come true? Самое главное сбылось. My biggest dream that's come true? Я думаю, что о том, о чем. I think I dreamt all my life to be independent of my parents, to have a home and family, to have children, like our parents lived. When you have a mom and a dad and children running around, that's what I call a family. Perhaps it is only here that he can again feel like the 14-year-old boy who journeyed into the unknown. At home with his mother, he is again an obedient son. He'll fly in all of a sudden, and then he's gone. I pray to God that my son stays healthy and can do what he likes as long as he has the strength and is healthy. Alexei's parents collect and cherish his trophies, diplomas, medals, and newspaper articles. Pride of place in this collection is given to a Kovi number 27 doll. Do you call your mother often? Well, maybe once a week. You're a caring son. Oh, I don't know. I try to be. Sometimes, though, you get so tired, you don't want to talk to anyone. Especially during the playing season. You just want to be left alone. You don't want to talk to anyone, just get away from it. Just be alone and be silent. I understand. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> no, no, don't leave me alone today. It's a special day. It was a special and a hectic day. It began with the usual practice session. As always, a warm-up and the coach's instructions before the game. The Montreal team is a small international unit with Frenchmen and Finns, Americans and Swedes, some Swiss and three Russian warriors. Alexei Kovalev is, of course, Ilya of Muram of the Russian folktale. Andrei Markov is Dobrynya Nikitic, the middle one, and the youngest, Sasha Perezhogin is a spitting image of Alyosha Popovich. Do they bully you sometimes? It's more like the other way around. I think that all the Russians in the NHL try to stick together. And that's the only way for us to survive. Do you agree with me that the Russians are the best? As a Russian, of course, I think the Russians are the best. We were taught to play hockey, to do what we can do best, and to be fond of our profession. So, of course, we are better. Meet NHL legend, sports journalist Red Fisher. He's been keeping a chronicle of Montreal's team for 51 years. He remembers the time between 1955 and 1960 when the team won five years in a row. He witnessed all 17 Stanley Cup wins. His authority in the NHL is great. He's quoted by fans and respected by the professionals. What to you, as a professional, is the meaning of the words Russian hockey? Russian hockey is great hockey. Let's put it that way. It's, it's as good as any hockey that I've that I've seen anywhere. And, and of course, with a lot of Russians coming over to the National Hockey League uh, to play, uh, we're seeing a lot of the best Russian hockey players like Ovechkin and Kovalchuk and so on, and Kovalev. And when our guys smashed that hope, Canadians pulled out all the stops. Sooner or later, it had to happen. Everybody remembers the historic match of the Soviet and Canadian teams, which shattered the myth about the invincibility of the Maple Leaf and overturned the fans' idea of our hockey, Russian hockey. It's 60 years old. It's inspired songs, films, and books. And now, like Russia itself, Russian hockey is regaining its former glory. <laughs> Как 
как искренно любили, как верили в себя. A new crop of Russian hockey players is taking to the ice. Today, they are 10 or 13 years old. Who knows? Perhaps among them are the future Tretyaks and Karlamovs, Fetisovs and Maltsevs, Larionovs and Krutovs, Kovalevs and Ovechkins. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Hockey is different in Russia now. A lot of young talent. Russian hockey is regaining its power, slowly. Slowly, but it is improving. Kovalev is spending his vacation touring Russia's hockey cities and giving master classes in each of them. He hops from one city to another in his small plane. He's pilot, crew commander, radio man, and navigator rolled into one. Tver, Elektrostal, Voskrizhensk, Togliati, Ufa, Chelyabinsk, Magnitogorsk, St. Petersburg. A route that would make any touring artist envious. We invited him on the air on Russian radio. And he told us how he had a great idea to do something for the kids. I am an impulsive person, and I readily respond to such kind ideas. So I thought, why can't we, the biggest radio station in the country, back him? Sergey, have you had anything to do with aviation? Nothing. Nothing. Well, this might be tough for you. What does a mixer mean in Russian pilot slang? A, a drink, B, an area of turbulence, or C, when pilots socialize. You got it. It means turbulence. Good for you. Well, tomorrow we begin preparing for the next leg. All the cities will be reached by plane. We try to show him not only as a hockey player and the captain of our team. He can fly a plane. He was telling us something about the saxophone, about golf and his other hobbies. And this really shows that he is a man of broad horizons, not an ordinary man. All I can do is look at how they skate, how good they are with the stick, and to show them how I trained when I was their age. I'll try to show them everything. Many people were confused about his motives. Some of them thought he was going to run for parliament or even a higher office. They thought, why doesn't he stay in his America or spend his vacation in the Bahamas? He seems to have everything, a contract worth several million, popularity, fame, recognition, a home. Why is he so restless? I don't know. I guess I've always wanted to do something for Russia. The kids who play sports, be it hockey or any other sport. I wouldn't like a kid to have to live through the same hardship as I have.
he conducted a master class in his native Togliati, together with his first coach, Vladimir Fyodorovich, whom he always remembers with gratitude, and the teacher was proud to get his autograph. <laughs> the kids who don't live in Moscow or Petersburg, but in the provinces, for them, it is a great day that they will remember for years, maybe for their whole lives. The training session is divided into three parts. How to skate correctly, stick handling, and how to shoot. I skated with the kids. I saw their eyes shine. They looked at me and listened to every word I said. I want to see you improvising. Not just like this, but imagine that you're trying to get past a defender one-on-one. -on -one. That's the whole point. You see that they're interested and you get fired up. If I make someone happy, I feel good myself. An ordinary morning an ordinary workout session. Nothing that would indicate that an important game on which the team's survival in the tournament depends was about to take place that evening. Do you have any dreams on the night before you play? Is there a dream perhaps that haunts you? I seldom have dreams, maybe once a month. Sometimes I feel like I do with a bit more variety in my dreams. But do you feel nervous and twitchy before the game, like, well, like young players do? No, I go into a game like it was a training session. So it's just another ordinary work day? Yes, I just hope it has a happy ending. <laughs> Montreal has practically shut down. The fans are heading out to watch the game. And any time the team plays, it's a major event in town. There are few cars or pedestrians in the street. All the people of Montreal are either at the sports arena or watching television in their homes or pubs. There's nothing like rooting for your favorite team over a mug of beer. and drinking to every point scored or lost. Just like in Russia, anything can serve as a pretext for having one more drink. Well, Alexei Vyacheslavovich, judging from yesterday's match, your trade is very taxing. Judging from the way I look. <laughs> <laughs> yes, judging from the way you look. Did you ever try to count your injuries? Well, if you think about injuries, you'll get them more often. So I try not to think about injuries, let alone count them. During his sports career, Kovalev has had five serious operations on his knee and nose, not to mention endless bruises. And no wonder, hockey players have short tempers, and such fights have come to be expected. Sometimes it looks more like a gladiator fight than hockey. One of the devils, uh... I don't know if it's Gomez out there because Gianta is there. Maybe it's Langenbrenner. We're just trying to guess at this point until we can actually see through the traffic. There, yeah, it is Jamie. I used to think that no one could make you lose your temper. No, but sometimes people go too far. They break the rules and the refs let them get away with it. So you have to let them know that if they keep it up, they're going to get a taste of it back. And they do. Now they're even. One player got a black eye and a penalty, and Kovalev got his eyebrow cut. He left the arena, had his eyebrow stitched up, and was back within seven minutes and scored. Here's Kovalev, score! When the man comes to play, he's still one of the best. Alexei Kovalev, a couple of big hits in the first period, and he just looked like something was driving him tonight. And look at this move here. Look at this dancing around. The toe drag into the body around Lukowicz and Marty Bruder. Stay with them. 
three nothing. Look it over here to your left, folks. Marty's moving, but it went right through the legs of Rafalski and into the net. As you look at a Panasonic digital replay. When I when I watch Kovalev. I'm looking at someone who has a, a tremendous amount of talent, probably as much talent as any of the great Russian stars with other teams and the great Russian stars before him. But what confounds me a little bit about Kovalev, if they'd let me play the way they talk about me, that I'm a key player and their only hope, so give me a chance, show that you really count on me. What can I accomplish sitting on the bench and watching? The great players, the really great players, they'll get the goals no matter what the system is, no matter what the coach wants them to do, they'll get the goals. His strong beliefs about how the game is best played are known to all the journalists. The walls of this locker room, decorated with players' uniforms and photographs, have heard some colorful Russian vocabulary from this kid from Togliati. They say even the hockey helmets shudder and the skates huddle in the corner when he gets going. When I arrived here, the coach wanted me to play in a different way. Different to what I was used to. I had my doubts, but decided to give it a try. Hoping that eventually he would understand me and try to play the game like I believed it should be played. We started the playoffs and unfortunately lost 3 nothing. So he asked me, Alex, what do you think we should do? I gave him suggestions. He agreed and decided to apply them to the game. And that was it. We won. That's him, a no-nonsense guy, our irrepressible Mr. Kobe, as he's been nicknamed by NHL fans. Alexei Kovalev, an experienced professional, scores 30 or 40 goals in a season, sometimes more. When he appears on the ice, the crowds roar, ko V, ko V, ko V. Alexei Kovalev has played almost a thousand games in regular NHL championships, which is why the jersey with number 27 and Kovalev's name on it is so popular. It's not easy to get into the National Hockey League now, nor was it easy 14 years ago. The league has room only for the very best. NHL managers and analysts, coaches and club owners watched the young player Alexei Kovalev while he was still playing in Russia. He caught their eye. They are always interested in our players, especially such talented ones as Alexei. He is an ambitious guy with a terrific technique. He's got this, I guess you'd say, inimitable style. It made many people notice him. Hello. Do you know Tanya? Glad to meet you. My name's Alexei. How do you manage to fly and play hockey? How can you combine these two things? <laughs> well, with the help of you and people like you. He also plays saxophone while sitting at the controls. <laughs> the Acheslav Fedosov, a legend of the sports world. He was among the first hockey players in Russia who began playing in the NHL. He played for the New Jersey Devils in 1989. Fedosov won the Stanley Cup twice. But the first Russian player to win hockey's most cherished trophy was Alexei Kovalev. He was with the Rangers at the time. Thus, America and NHL tournaments brought together these two remarkable players belonging to different generations. Where are all the hockey guys? So far, you're the only one. <laughs> oh, 
There's old Lake Tverdovsky. <laughs> oh, careful. Well, geez, you've gone and done your suit in. Thus, on September the 2nd, 2005, surrounded by friends and colleagues, he marked the end of his vacation, which was very much a busman's holiday. He's off to America in a few hours. I think people remember Alexei as one of the young leaders on the team that won New York's first Stanley Cup in 50-odd years. And the city has never forgotten it. The gallery of heroes who have appeared in Kirill Nabutov's show is vast, but Alexei Kovalev occupies a special place in it. He's not a simple guy. He's an unusual and interesting individual. But there is not a trace of anything phony in him, as sometimes happens to people with publicity and fame, when a person only thinks about how he looks in front of the camera and about giving interviews. I find that very appealing about him. Yeah. <laughs> Although he is a grown-up man who has been through a lot in his life and who has achieved success, he is not a tired man. He has interests outside hockey, and he is very enthusiastic. He's into the saxophone, and he forgets that he is Kovalev, a star, and that he should behave like a star. He is a born captain. He is somebody who doesn't talk much. He goes forward, without words. He wouldn't even shout, follow me, as he attacks. Kovalev's life story has yet to be written. He has a lot to tell, many exciting and funny stories, but also travail and obstacles, ups and downs. Only God and Alexei know how many ups and downs he's had. Fans may believe that a star's life is easy, but actually, it's all about hard work, disappointments, and rare moments of joy. We need such heroes. I think there must be heroes to hold up as examples. I mean, not people who are in jail or on the run, but heroes who can provide an example for young people so that they can see someone who is an athlete, whose hobby is aviation, and also music, who is a loving father and who values family life. Mm -hmm. 
One day here in the club, Alexei sat at the piano and began to play a tune with his two fingers. And Butman started to improvise. That was a very nice, soulful moment. A meeting of souls. One thing I can say, you're lucky to have her for a wife. Oh, yes, most definitely. She's the kind of person who says it the way it is. She's very frank. I never thought I would become a hockey expert because before I met Alexei, I never watched hockey. She's a real fan who can tell you the whole truth about your play. We've had quarrels when I thought she was wrong and she thought I was wrong. But now he listens to me because he feels I understand hockey. I watch all the hockey games. I think I know something about hockey. I understand the psychology of the players and the coaches. If she thinks I was wrong on some point, naturally I'll argue that I was right. Of course he doesn't like it when he's criticized. Who does? <laughs> I think he takes note of my critical remarks, but he doesn't like being criticized. And still, it sticks in your memory, and it begins to get to you. And you wait for the next game to correct yourself. He is the man I love, and I want to be useful to him. And sometimes there's no point in just flattering and praising him. Restructuring is the name of the game. As soon as they build something, they start rebuilding it. The country was entering a new era, the era of perestroika, or restructuring, and Alexei Kovalev was embarking on a new life, happy and in love. He was 16 and played hockey. She was 15 and played tennis. They met on a tennis court, a true sports duet. It all happened imperceptibly, and I don't think either of us expected that we would be together. Maybe it was love at first sight, but not the crazy kind of love. It crept up on us. Very gradually, you know. She asked me to her birthday party, and I came along with some friends. Then I called her at home, and then again. So, little by little, we began to date. He would call me and walk me home. Sometimes he returned to his hotel, the dormitory, after the metro closed. He had to walk the whole way. I admired him for being so disciplined. He had a great sense of purpose. And I was amazed that he lived alone in a dormitory, and you couldn't tell it from the way he looked. Always neat and well-groomed. <laughs> well-fed and with shoes on his feet. Well-fed and neat. Well, he's just a disciplined type. You're a happy man, Alexei. Do you think it's all just luck? Or is it something you've achieved by colossal work and personal merit? 
Sometimes you sit and think, it was a bad game, it was a bad tournament. For instance, we screwed up at the Olympics. Winter Olympics, Turin, 2006. Everyone was waiting for our team to play, and we all believed our team would win. Here are our guys, and here's the captain of the Russian team, Alexei Kovalev. No, actually, the team played fine. What was lacking was the coach's tactical skill in putting the right players on the ice at the right time. We were outplayed. He entrusted the game against the Canadians to Mikhailov, his assistant, and we won that game 2-0. He handled that game correctly, and with the Finns, he decided to do it himself, and the coaches of other teams were better tactically. The early victories were met with jubilation. We thought that Russian hockey was back. Alas, our joy was premature. After victories came defeats. But let's put sad thoughts aside. We have everything to play for. An athlete's life is a bit like the dithering of Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. You lose here and you lose there. Victory was within reach, but I'm always out of luck. Maybe this is just part of my nature. No matter how well I play, I want to play better. You lose, you're mad at yourself, and you dwell on it. But then you sit down and think back, and you begin to see your life in a different light. After all, it wasn't so bad. I won here, I won there. Alexei Kovalev, a Russian guy looks out on his Montreal fans from a huge billboard over the main entrance to the Bell Centre Stadium. His face exudes concentration and a fighter's confidence. Would the hundreds of adoring fans ever believe that Kovalev is tormented by the question, to be or not to be? For them, there's no doubt that it is to be. More goals from their idol, more victories for their team, and they're thrilled each time he skates out onto the ice. And no wonder, because what Kovalev does on the ice enthralls Montreal. He's long been a legend among his numerous fans. And your country and Russia should be very proud of this because he's got everything, everything. He's, he's, he's exciting to watch. And that's, that's what hockey is all about. If you don't see excitement on the ice, forget it. It's not a game anymore. Driving with Alexei across the city, you can't help thinking how hard it is to fit in here. It's even harder to become the idol of fans of the team that won the Stanley Cup 24 times. Hockey is a religion here, and the fans are of all ages. Here are some young fans. And here's a little kid with a pacifier in his mouth who came from another city to root for Montreal's opponents. Everyone loves hockey. As they wait for the players, they're ready to spend hours hunting for autographs or have their picture taken with one of their idols. This will be a cherished memento for the rest of their lives. I'm an ordinary man, just like everyone else. But they insist on getting my autograph. I don't really care who I am and what I am. What matters for me is what'll happen tomorrow and not what happened two days ago. On the way back, Alexei and I were driving through narrow Montreal streets. He was taking me on a guided tour. Drivers recognized him and smiled. Honestly, I was glad for Alexei and for all of our guys in the NHL. Thanks to them, 
Many foreigners associate the word Russian with strength, talent, and brilliance, lofty as it may sound. He is so conscientious, like his father. The little one, Venetska, takes after his father, which means that Nikita takes after his mother? If you mean their looks, it's the other way around. Vanya looks more like me, and Nikita looks like his dad. But if you speak about their characters, Nikita is like me, and Vanya is like his father. Daddy, also known as Alexei, is coming back home with gifts. It's his second son's second birthday. Vanyok! Vanyok! These are for you! Happy birthday! And I remember we had a game that day. And Zenya called me at 6 in the morning and said that Vanya was born. I was in a panic. I didn't know what to do. And she told me, it's all right, we're okay, you stay there and play. With him. Tries to slide it through, Fuzetti gets it again. Here's Kovalev, he scored! We were playing Boston to get into the playoffs. We won that game. I scored the winning goal. The fans never knew that the winning goal was dedicated to the birth of his son, Ivan Alexeyevich Kovalev. It's fun watching Alexei playing with his sons. He looks like a child himself and is every bit as interested in the toys as the kids are. Would you like them to become professional hockey players? I'll let them decide for themselves. I made my own decisions. The kids will choose their careers themselves? I think so. I'll give them skates and I'll come to watch them at practice. I'll skate with them. Zenya, being a tennis player, will play tennis with them in the summer. And then they can make their own choices. I said I'd play until I'm 50. I think I may yet play professionally with my children. <laughs> You're 33 now. I sometimes forget. A couple of months pass and I forget whether I'm 32 or 33. I never think about my age. You have to forget your age and just live. The more you do in life, the longer you live. That's what I think. Vanya's second birthday was marked by a small party with Russian songs. The Kovalevs love parties, only they can't afford to have them often. The playing season was drawing to an end. A long-awaited vacation beckoned, and as always, of course, for Alexei Kovalev, it meant work on new projects. He's not in the habit of vacationing, and his head is full of plans. A youth hockey tournament in Moscow, a golf championship, the list goes on and on. Kovi is a powerhouse of energy. Life is exciting. I want to know more and more. I want to try everything. When you live like that all the time, you don't notice that you're tired. Dusk in Montreal. The guests are about to leave. It's time for the kids to go to bed and for our crew to prepare to leave for Moscow. Our trip to Canada is almost over. But for sure, we won't leave until Ivan Alexeyevich's birthday cake is brought in. And of course, as he blows out the candles, Vanka has made a wish. Let there always be sunshine, let there always be mother, let there always be me. So we dedicate this film about real men who do more than just play hockey to you, Vanka, and to your generation.
My name is Alex Kovale. Welcome to my Tips and Drills DVD. Because everybody knows from shooting comes the goals. This is my power shot. Welcome to the training section of this DVD. Okay, working those beach muscles. You want to make it a total body workout. Pick and choose what you want to do on a given day. It's all about movement of your feet and transfer your weight. You can increase your speed. I hope you enjoy it. The Russian gift of life has been around since 1975. This foundation has been created to provide cardiac care for the children worldwide. As you might not know, I was one of those children with a heart problem. And just because of my dream uh, to become a hockey player, I overcome this and fight it through and became who I want to be. Well, previous years, uh, this foundation uh, uh, didn't have many uh, clinics in Russia and didn't have many doctors uh, to provide kids with this uh, type of surgeries. And um, in the past, it was a little bit harder, people donating money, and uh, they had to um, bring the kids overseas, uh, which is to the United States or Canada. In Russia, we managed to open five new clinics throughout the country able to uh, bring the doctors from the United States and Canada and teach our doctors in Russia to pr uh, produce this kind of surgeries and now we're able to save a um, lot more lives uh, these days. This foundation managed to save a lot of uh, children's life through the United States and Canada, providing them with the life-saving surgeries. By having purchased this DVD, also make you a contributor to this foundation. Once again, thank you. Pretty cool for uh, for me the first time uh, being uh, inside the building for three days is like in jail. <laughs> okay, stand by. Now we filming easiest way to do exercise. <laughs> on action. Three. The idea and everything uh, that was going on was, uh, was, was pretty amazing. The way you know everything being organized and uh, you know it was, it was a great time. I, I really enjoyed it. I was do. What do you mean, so like less? Pousse le cowl. Il y a de l'eau. Non, c'est ça, là. Je sais pas ce qui se passe. Là. Yeah, we have to pick up the water, we have a meltdown here. 
Oh yeah, I mean, uh, it's, well, you guys uh, didn't know uh, anything about it, why it melted. Uh, you know, I actually came early to warm up and I was uh, going so fast and uh, just trying to warm my legs and, and overall and, and all of a sudden I uh, made the air inside the building so hot that it didn't start melting. <laughs> Ice is melting, and that's uh, all the director fault. So you gotta make him pay for that. It's kind of like they, you know, started getting ice problem, then camera problem, then like, all right, we'll film tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> we are the champions, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's day three. Last day. Good morning. 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 I, did, I think I did pretty good. I was surprised myself too. Okay, the third step, we're gonna do the same drill. But you're going home. 
Next drill. Oh, I'm looking that way. <laughs> you said look at me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm going in English and Russian mix now. <laughs> now, let me tell you about four different shots in hockey. Snapshot. Reshot. Slap shot. <laughs> Backhand shot. Okay, let's see that in the game situation. Alex is blind, okay? And we're gonna all leave the set. We won't have to do that. Okay, uh, let's try to do this. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I'll try. Good job, boys! That was only three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. That was nice. That was I good. want to thank everybody. For, uh, for most of you, probably was the first experience. For me, it was the first experience. And everybody know how much important this DVD for me. So I want to thank everybody for all the job you did. It was a tough three days for all of us. For you, for me, and... But in the end, it's going to pay off. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, this is uh, for charity and for a lot of kids that we can help uh, save lives. So, you know, and we, uh, we're gonna save the lives of a lot of kids. And I think not only me, all of you that have been working on this DVD. Thanks very much again. Yeah. Is that a real rap? Yes, Alex, it's a real rap. All right, then drinks on me. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love it. I love you, all of you guys. I love you. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. This one is real. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Is it a wrap? That's cool, man. I can't believe you left me on the ice. You know, definitely not expecting to see that. <laughs> Three days been working together and they just left it right in the end. I can't believe this. <laughs> it's a wrap. 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 It's a wrap, man. Finally, we're done. But we did it good.